Accomplishment starts with the first step. Leadership expert, best-selling author, and coach John C. Maxwell helps leaders pursue a more meaningful existence with his new book, Intentional Living, Choosing a Life That Matters. In 2014, John was named the number one leader in business by the American Management Association and the most influential leadership expert in the world by Business Insider and Inc. Magazine. As the founder of the John Maxwell Company, Equip, the John Maxwell Team, and the John Maxwell Leadership Foundation, he has trained more than six million leaders from every country in the world. The recipient of the Luminary Leadership Network's Mother Teresa Prize for Global Peace and Leadership, John speaks each year to Fortune 500 companies, presidents of nations, and many of the world's top business leaders. Ready to take your first step? Let's welcome John Maxwell. It was only a few years after the Iron Curtain had come down. came in and we had a wonderful conversation. He said, I've read several of your books and I'm delighted to do this for you. And he said, I just want to say uh, before we go out that you have a challenge. And I said, well, what's the challenge? He said, I know that you believe that leaders add value to people. I said, yeah, I, I really believe that. He said, well, you've got a problem here because he's going to speak to 12,000 people who have never had a leader add value to them. They don't understand the leaders add value to them. And when you go out and start talking to them about that, it's going to be a major disconnect. I said, well, thanks for telling me. I'm only five minutes away. <laughs> and I can promise you in that five minutes, I had to internally regroup. I began to ask myself, how am I going to connect with them? Because all communicators connect on common ground. What, what am I going to say? What, what can I do that will allow us to, to get on the same page as quickly as possible? Because we're, we're literally going in two different ways. And so when I walked out on stage and I looked at them, and I can tell you, as I looked into their faces, I could just by watching their faces tell that, that leadership was something they did not understand at all. And I asked them two questions. I asked them question number one, have you ever been suspicious of leaders? Every hand was raised. And when they put their hand down, the second question I asked them is, have you ever had a leader hurt you? And every hand seemed to be raised. And then I talked to him about the fact that everything rises and falls. can lead anyone, he or she has to find them. You've got to find the person before you lead the person. And so I shared with them, there's one thing I want you to get right. Now they're ready to lean in, they're ready to listen, listen because I'm not going to talk a lot about leadership, it's not going to be in depth, but, but it's really the, the first step of leadership, and that's all I want to do. If I could accomplish that, and I knew the only way I could accomplish that is to get them to think intentionally. And the reason for that is that because everything they thought about leadership was in a negative sense.
motivating people and manipulating people. And manipulating people, it's always wrong. A few years ago, I was speaking at the United Nations, and I was speaking to the ambassadors, and I realized all the different cultures that would be there, and they wanted me to talk to them for two hours on leadership. And so I shared with them in that time period that there There are three questions that followers ask leaders. Three questions. Doesn't matter the culture, doesn't matter the country, doesn't even matter the time. There are three questions that followers ask leaders. And question number one is, do you like me? Do you like me? Well, why would I want to follow someone that doesn't care for me? Question number two is, can you help me? I mean, if I follow you, is it going to get better? Are you going to lift me? I mean, why would I get in line if my life isn't going to be any better because of you? And the third question, can I trust you? Can I trust you? Are, are, are you going to take my life and are you going to manipulate it or are you going to take my life and are you truly going to make it better? And what's interesting about those three questions, I mean, do you like me? That's about compassion. You know, can you help me? That's about competence, you know. Can I trust you? That, that's about character. What's interesting about those three questions is basically those three questions that the person is asking, will you add value to my life? And intentionally, adding value to people, when we do it on an everyday consistent basis, things begin to become absolutely amazing. Now, let me give you a visual. Everything worthwhile is uphill. Everything. Life's not easy, never has been, isn't supposed to be. Everything that you and I have in our life if it's precious and it's beautiful, it's uphill. If you have a great marriage, relationally, working on that every day, it's uphill all the way. Trust me, if you're going to be a healthy person, it's uphill all the way. It's uphill all the way. If, if you're going to be successful in life, if you're going to build a business, it, it, it's uphill all the way. Trust me, I, I've never heard a person that built a business or was successful and they ask, well, how did, you, how did you get here? I've never seen a person just look at the camera and say, wow, I have no idea. <laughs> Honest to God, I just woke up. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> no. That leader knows exactly how they got there because it's uphill all 
the way. And here's the problem. People have uphill hopes. And they have downhill habits. And the only way that you and I can break a downhill habit is to get intentional in our life. In fact, that's the reason I wrote the book Intentional Living. Because all of a sudden, I began to understand and realize that people that I was trying to help lead and lift and and get them to go to a, a whole new level, that until they could turn on that switch of intentional, they could never get to where they needed to get. I mean, trust me, folks, no one has ever spoken about accidental achievement. You see, intentional living is deliberate. You really have to think about it a long time. And it's consistent. It's more than one day. To go uphill, it's day in, day out, day in, out. And I'm telling you, it's willful. You've got to come. I've got to come and make a choice in our life that we're going to live intentionally. And just like those folks in Kiev, when I looked at them and I said, you're going to have to be intentionally in every day adding value to people. Why did I say that? Because it's uphill all the way. Because can I tell you something? Significance. Significance is not about me. It's about others. Significance, it's all, it's all uphill. It's all uphill. But, but just as this significance is uphill of adding value as a leader to people every day, you have to understand there's a downhill habit that fights against significance, and that is selfishness. <laughs> selfishness and significance are incompatible. And I know, I know. I know you say, boy, John, this is good stuff. And boy, I hope some people on my team are watching this in that simulcast. <laughs> I am so glad you're talking about this. Mm. Thank God. It's not my problem. Mm. So you think you're not selfish, huh? I think we are. If you don't think you're selfish, let me ask you a question. When somebody takes a group picture of you, and you look at that picture, who is the first person you look for? <laughs> and, and, if it's a good picture. I mean, you look good, you look good. That's how you determine it's a good picture. You look good, you say, oh my gosh. Good picture. Hey, send that to me. Send it. <laughs> and if it's not a good picture, say, wait, 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 wait a minute. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Let's do another one. Come on, let's regroup. Let's do another one. <laughs> you judge the whole picture on how good you look. Oh, but we're not selfish. And we don't take selfies. <laughs> The reason I teach intentional living is because most people, they don't lead their life. Most people accept their life. And when you accept your life, it's unintentional. And it's downhill. So how as leaders, if the core of leadership is truly being committed to add value to people. How do we intentionally do this? I mean, how do we, how do we go start going uphill? And I'm going to give you what I call my, my rule of five. Five things I do every day that intentionally adds value to people. And I just want to give them to you because I, they're so simple. They're so simple. And, and, and what's so beautiful is every one of you can do it. In fact, take a moment and look at your neighbor right now and say, even you can do this. Go ahead and tell them that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> oh, you're not only saying even you can do this, you're telling them how they can do this. I can tell you that right now. You're, you're going a lot farther than I asked you to go. <laughs> In fact, look at the person that you just said, even you can do this, and say, why do you think I brought you here? I mean, hello. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> All right, five. Five things I do every day. Number one, every day I value people. If you're going to add value to people intentionally, it all begins foundationally with valuing people. Now, I'm a person of faith, and as I follow Jesus in all four Gospels, the conclusion I come after finishing the four, watching him take steps in a short time here, the one thing I come in conclusion when I look at Jesus, at the, if you say, John, what is the essence of Jesus? The essence of Jesus is that he values people. Oh, my. Nicodemus would say, Jesus values me. The Samaritan woman would say, Jesus values me. The thief on the cross would say, Jesus values me. Children would say, Jesus values me. And when he would tell stories, he would tell stories about the lost sheep and how he would leave the 99 to go find that one because of the value of that sheep. And he'd talk about the, the son that came home, that prodigal son. You just listen to the words of Jesus. You just watch the footsteps of Jesus. And Jesus valued people. And I just want you to know God values you. In fact, I, think it's, I, I just think it's a good exercise. Let's all say together, uh, together, God values me. Let's say it now. God values me. And look at your neighbor and let's say, God values you. God values you. <sighs> Feel better, don't we? And, and, and I want you to, let, let's say this with me. Say this with me. God values people I don't know. God values people. It's true, isn't it? It's true. One more. Just, just say this one with me. God values people I don't like. We felt so good on the first three. <laughs> it is, I mean, it's wonderful when we say, oh, God values people I don't know. Yes, yes, but those that I know I don't like. <laughs> I, I think we as Christ followers are going to have to make a choice. And I, I see this choice being pressed upon us more every day. I think as Christ followers, we're going to have to ask ourselves, are we going to spend our life connecting with people or correcting them? I tell you, I cannot stay here, but my heart breaks. Because I think those that are not people of faith, if they would look at us, they would see us much more as correctors than connectors. And if we could just start valuing every person, period, end of story, with the love of Jesus, we would be so attractive to people. But listen to me, you can't add value to people if you don't value people. Every day I value people. Number two, every day I think of ways to add value to people. I, I think of ways to add value to people. You see, intentional living is upfront thinking. You can't be intentional if you don't upfront think. You see, when you're upfront thinking, you're preparing. When you're, when you're back in thinking, you're repairing. And, and intentional living insists on intentional thinking. And adding value to people means that every day I think of ways that I can add value to people. So what does that mean? That means this morning when I got up in my hotel room, I knew I was going to be speaking today. How can I add value to you? What can I say? I knew I'd have a few moments with Bill. Well, how can I add value to him? What, what can I say to him? 
And I'm consistently asking myself that question every morning. Who am I going to see and how can I add value to them? Who am I going to see and how am I going to add value to them? I have five grandchildren. When I'm with my grandchildren, we do this exercise all the time. We'll sit there around. They call me Papa. They call Margaret Mimi. Mar Margaret, before the first grandchild was born, picked the names. <laughs> she looked at me. She said, the grandchildren are going to call me Mimi. I said, well, I like that. But she said, I don't want them to call you Pee Pee. <laughs> I buy that too. So, so they call me Papa. And I sit with the grandchildren, and I do this with their sex drives all the time with them. I'll, I'll say, okay, kids, um, who are we going to see tomorrow? And, and, and how are we going to add value to them? And they'll talk to me about what they're going to do tomorrow and, and who they're going to add value to. And the other day, James, who's nine, he's the youngest, he, he said, Papa, he said, uh, I know what I'm going to do tomorrow to add value to people. I said, what is it, James? He said, I'm going to open doors for people. I said, I love that, buddy. I love that. He said, I'm, I'm going to do more than that, Papa. He said, I'm intentional. He, he said, I'm not only going to open doors. He said, I'm going to smile. <laughs> and he said, I'm not only going to smile, I'm going to say, have a good day. I said, you got it, James. You got it, buddy. Go get him. The next evening, he's on the phone with me, Papa, Papa, I opened 42 doors today. He's nine, and he's got it. He understands the value of intentionally, intentionally adding value to people. So every day, I, I, I value people. That's foundational. And every day, I, I think of ways to add value to people. And the third thing I do every day is every day, I look for ways to add value to people. Now, now I'm with them. And as I'm with them, I'm, I'm looking for ways to add value to them. I, I have my receptors out there. I'm, I'm looking for ways to do that. You see, we, we see things as we are, not as they are. And, and so what I've discovered and learned is this, is that when I am an added value liver, I intentionally live this added value life every day. Guess what? I begin to see ways to add value to people. If you're an added value liver, you'll become an added value looker. <laughs> and so every day I look for ways to add value to people, especially people who don't even know me. Those are the ones I make sure every day I do. I, I want to add value to people who don't know me, who I'm passing through. They're never going to be able to repay me. I, I just want to make sure that, that I have that opportunity. And then number four, every day. Every day I add value to others. This is the action item. Every day I make sure that I go from knowing to doing, from thinking and looking to making sure that it's action. And at the end of the day, I ask myself, did I add value to people today? Did I add value to people today? My father's 94. Uh, when mother passed away a few years ago, he, we asked him to go into assisted care living, and, and, and he did. He's, he drives. He's still he's an amazing guy. He's just an amazing person. But we wanted to be close to good health care, so he's got a villa there. And then he told me one day at lunch, he said, son, he said, you have to understand, I, I'm moving into the villa first. They were just building it. And he said, I'm going to be the first to move into the assisted care. And I said, oh, dad, that's great. I said, why, why do you want to be the first one to move in? He said, well, son. I want to be there first because, first of all, you know, son, old people are going to come here. <laughs> and he said, these old people that are coming, they're nervous. And they, they, maybe this is the first time they've left their family. And he said, I want to be at the front door, and I want to, I want to shake their hand and say, my name's Melvin Maxwell, and I live here, and you're going to like it here, and we're going to be friends. And that's exactly what my dad does. Every day, every day, add value to people. I value people, look for ways, think for ways, do things that add value to people. Number five, every day I encourage others to add value to people. In fact, it's my mission in life. That's why I'm here today. I'm encouraging you to, begin to be intentional, uphill all the way, adding value to people from this day on. So I close with this story. I was... I was speaking at one of my coaching conferences, 
And uh, we, we, we had a lady named Gabby, a young lady, a mother of two from Paraguay, who happened to hear me talk about how we were trans doing our best to bring transformation to countries through going with the invitation of the president and, and then going to the seven streams and starting at the top and teaching basically round tables and that's how we do it. We gather people in six and eight and, and we teach them leadership values and when they get leadership values it lifts them and it begins to lift their culture and it's a beautiful process. And so I was telling that and Gabby was there and she was listening and she called home to her husband Tim and she said, you know, we need that in Paraguay, Tim. We, 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 we need transformation in Paraguay, and, and I'm going to lead this transformational movement. And Tim says, you've got to be kidding. She said, I'm not kidding at all. She said, I'm coming home. I'm going to quit my job. I, I'm, going to, I'm going to lead this. And she came up to me. She, had, she just had her passport, and she said, John, I just heard you talk. She said, can you give me one word that's life-changing? And I wrote the word transformation on it. And she held that up, and she said, that's what I'm going to do for my country she came back to the next conference six months later, had resigned from her job, had a very good job in college, and she'd resigned from her job, and she came back, and, and, and she said, I want you to sign your intentional living book for the president. I said, good. I said, do you know him? And she said, no. <laughs> but she says, I'm going to meet him because I've got to meet him so that he'll write you a letter to come to Paraguay and make it a long story very short. That's exactly what she did. She met him, gave him the book, a few months later, he asked us to come. We went, spoke to him, spoke to the leaders of this country. I am on Sunday. On Sunday, I'm going to leave and I'll go to Paraguay, where we've now, in about eight months, trained 75,000 people through roundtables, have 20,000 facilitators. So I called Gabby on the phone. I said, Gabby, tell me the story one more time. And she said, oh, John, she said, when you come Sunday, you're going to cry. She said, you're going to cry because you're going to see the things that God is doing in this country. She said, the, the Secretary of Education has now asked us if we'll train. And John, when you come on Tuesday, you're going to speak to 8,000 facilitators that are going to train 70,000 school teachers throughout the entire country. And she started talking to me, all these things are happening. And she kept saying, that's totally God. 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 And I laid back in my chair in my office, and the tears began to flow. And I thought, here is one lady that decided to add value to people, that decided to intentionally go at a country and make a difference. And she was totally God, totally God, totally God, totally God. And the question I have today as I wrap this all up is very simple. As I look at every one of you, the question is very simple. Out of 300,000 people, who's going to be the next Gabby? Who's going to be the next young lady who says, I am going to intentionally add value to people every day and make my life count? I am guessing that there are going to be Gabby's rise up. And this leadership summit is destined to make a difference for the ages. God bless.